Hey everyone, this is Rob over here at Boonbape, and I hope you're having an amazing day. Today I'll be bringing you all a new world guide, and this time it's going to be on my top 3 favorite solo farms in order to get your gear score from 500 to 575. While you can get some gear here that's going to be higher than 575, it is going to be much more rare, and at that point I think you should switch mainly to group content for finding upgrades. And while this is going to be mainly focused at solo players, you can totally do these farms with up to five people, and I think two would be the ideal number. A lot of these farms don't have enough mobs in order to really sustain a five-man group, so if you have that many, I'd recommend one of the elite farms. So I came up with the idea for this video and for a lot of these spots by simply grinding them myself because while I am on a lot doing group content, the company is not always on or just simply people aren't looking for group content at every time of the day. And whenever I wanted to find some gear upgrades, I'd kind of be at a loss. So hopefully these three spots really help you out and you're not like me, just wondering what you should be doing. And so if you do need some gear upgrades, try out these spots and let me know how they go. Also, if you have any other spots that you'd like to share, let us know down in the comments. So, as always, if you do like this video or it does help you out at all, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel, and I really do appreciate it. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into the very first spot. So a quick pit stop before we get into it, I'm going to go over my build setup and just a quick tip that I have before we go into it because I know someone's going to ask. So as far as my setup goes, I am usually using the Great Axe and Hatchet. I think this is a great combo. It has a lot of life steal and life maintainability, so a lot of sustain whenever you're fighting these enemies, which is great in a solo encounter. I've also been switching out the Hatchet for the Life Staff as I've been leveling it up, and it does help you sustain your fights for quite a bit longer as well. As far as the main tip that I would say is to bring a lot of recovery food if you possibly can. That's going to make your trips a lot easier or use some kind of a weapon combo setup that's going to give you a lot of health sustain. So make sure to bring some kind of health potion as well as recovery food. And also either make sure to bring or gather some materials to pop up tents whenever you can because dying as a solo player is very punishing. I know a lot of new players or even myself when I first hit 60 didn't make enough camps and it would be a lot of running and hopefully I've learned my lessons now but even now and then I'll forget a camp and have to run the extra 500 meters because I forgot. So starting off here at the map we are going to be mainly looking at the shattered mountain area. All three different farms are actually going to be in this area which is nice because if you don't like one or the other hopefully you can try out some of them and one will work for you. So we're going to be starting in no particular order, just from left to right on the map. And this first one is actually going to be five different locations that you can farm in order and redo. So a great option for this farm as well is to make the mountain home outpost your inn. Or you can start from the right side and make the mountain rise outpost your inn, depending on which way you go. But we're going to start from the left and hit Odium. So Odium is a small camp. All of these camps are laid out very, very similarly. And they have a decent amount of chests, anywhere between 5 to 10 chests. Some small, some big, none are elite, unfortunately. And the enemies here aren't too difficult. You can kite them around and actually line of sight them behind a wall and run them to you, because a lot of them are ranged enemies. So you simply loot all these chests, kill the enemies, and you're good to move on to the next one. Sometimes the enemies will drop loot, and also the larger chests will have a chance at some pretty good loot as well. You'll also get the high level reagents as well as provisions. So you can either sell that or use that to upgrade your crafting. This is going to be the same case for the next four spots that I recommend as well. So usually a entire route is going to start with you going to Odium. Jumping down here to Vehemence. Right across the road to Eratus. Up a little bit to Polis. And finally just a little northeast to Lapsus. You can either then die there, which will take you to Mountain Rise, and you can teleport over and start again at Odium. Or like I said, you can do what I recommended and simply recall to the Mountain Home Outpost. This is going to take you anywhere between 40 minutes to an hour to complete this entire run if you are slower like me. If you are running pretty fast, like in a group or something like that, then you can move on to our next two areas, which are actually pretty close to the end of this first run. 
So if we zoom in, both of these next two spots are going to be relatively close to the Mountain Rise Outpost. The first one here, I think, is a little more well known than these other two, and that's going to be in the Lonely Climb. So in this area, it's the Spileo Cavern, and there are two semi-elite enemies is what I like to call them. And these semi-elite slash rare enemies are going to be what you're mainly going for, although you can farm the enemies in here as well, as well as the chests. So the first elite enemy is going to spawn down here to the southwest in this circle area. And then you can make your way through the cavern and find the second in this northeast area. So both of these circles are going to be where the elites spawn. And like I said, just making your way in between them, you can pick up those enemies and kill them. And it pretty much works out exactly where if you kill one and then run to the other, then they will have spawned so it makes it really nice kill one run to the other kill one run to the other and you can do this for as long as you want for the third and final spot we are going to be over here to the far east in the shattered mountains so east of the mountain rise outpost we are going to be looking at spryla tower so this is a level 63 area with the highest level enemies of any of the areas that we've mentioned. So make sure to take care. If you happen to pull multiple of these, it can be very dangerous. So this is surrounded by other smaller camps and all of these camps, unfortunately, are pretty worthless. They have the blight enemies and practically no chests. So I wouldn't even recommend going and checking them out. Although you can, of course, it's just kind of a waste of time. So whenever you do get to Spryla Tower, there is not going to be a ton of enemies. There's going to be the Toxic Dogs as well as the Treant type people, the Ancients. And they are pretty easy to defeat, luckily. And also, if you do have 100 woodcutting, you can fight the dogs and do some logging at the same time. They have some pretty nice drops being Wordwood as well as the Life Quintessences. There are going to be a few chests here and there. I think there's around five in total. But the main thing that you're going to be here for is the semi-elite enemy that is in the middle. This is a dagger-wielding semi-elite, and he can be pretty nasty to deal with, so make sure you do have some decent health potions or food, or are just really on your toes when you fight him, because he can deal some significant damage. He also has a really good chance for dropping some nice loot, and that's why he's mainly the reason we're here. So after you defeat him, just go around killing all the enemies, maybe do some logging, some gathering, and then he responds after about five minutes, I found. So that's going to be it for all three of these spots. Like I said, they all are in the same area, so make sure to give them all a try and let me know down in the comments which ones that you did like the most. Personally, I'm a big fan of the very first farm we mentioned where you hit all five camps. There's usually not a single soul in sight, and it's pretty easy to solo a bunch of the enemies, and it does give you the tier 5 reagents. And while I have been to all of these three places for quite a few hours at each of them now, and I do think you are going to have a better chance at finding higher level gear at Spryla Tower, honestly, I'd recommend just doing whichever you find to be the most fun and something that you can repeat as that's probably going to lead to the most amount of gains if you are able to stay there for a long period of time. That being said, at all of these spots, I've found gear anywhere between 505 gear score all the way up to 571 gear score. So slowly working your way up over time is going to be good and sprinkling in some group content whenever you can, whether that be at the Scorched Mines, Merc Guard, or at Caminus. All of those places are going to be great and all of this is going to increase your gear score getting you that much closer to 600. So I do hope this video helped you out and that you find one of these spots to be a great fit for you. So that's going to be it for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon.